Christmas can be summed up um, with two words, traditions and surprises. Take traditions. Every family has its Christmas traditions, like decorating trees, or like making gingerbread houses, or hanging up stockings, a big Christmas dinner with turkey and pumpkin pie and stuffing, drinking eggnog together around a roaring fire, or sending out Christmas cards. Christmas is all about family traditions. But it's also about surprises. I remember Christmas Eve, I could hardly sleep, hoping and expecting to get those toys that I was, I was hoping for. That evening, I didn't have visions of sugar plums dancing in my head. I had visions of Hot Wheels and visions of G.I. Joes and visions of that new bike that I was hoping for. Traditions and surprises. You know, in many ways, the very first Christmas 2,000 years ago, those two words, traditions and surprises, could sum up the very first Christmas as well. Because Israel had certain traditions, certain expectations and hopes of the coming of the Messiah, a Messiah who would reign in justice and righteousness as king. But Israel also had some surprises, surprises in that they were not expecting the promises to be fulfilled in certain ways. For example, you might not be aware of this, but there's a strong tradition that Jesus was actually born in a cave, much like the cave behind me here. We'll talk more about that later. Let's talk about some of the traditions, the expectations Israel had, but also the surprises, how those hopes and expectations were fulfilled in unusual ways. Three great traditions and three great surprises to those traditions. Here's our first tradition, the tradition or expectation for the coming of a Messiah, the promise of a king from the line of David. In the 10th century BC, King David, had just been established as the king. He'd found peace um, from all of his enemies. God had established him on his throne. And he was so grateful to God, he wanted to build a house for God, a temple for God. So he told his prophet, the prophet Nathan, that he wanted to do that. Nathan said, go ahead, build the house. But then God gave him a different message. Through Nathan, he said, no, David, you're not to build a house for me. In fact, I want to build a house for you. What he meant by a house was a dynasty, a line of kings. He promised David that one day he would raise up a king after him, his son, his descendant, who would reign on his throne forever. And so Israel longed for this promise to be fulfilled. And the prophets, after David, picked up this theme of the coming of a great king from David's line, the coming of the Messiah. In Luke chapter 1, the angel Gabriel comes to a young virgin by the name of Mary and announces to Mary that now is the time of fulfillment. This promise, this expectation for a Messiah was soon to be fulfilled. The angel said he would be great and would be the son of the Most High and the Lord God would give him the throne of his kingdom forever. So the first great tradition, the first great expectation was the coming of a king from the line of David. And Israel was hoping and longing for that king.